PIB binder requirements, class code SS 1.4, revised May 2019. There are documents that are required to be maintained in your EIB binder on site, as well as having copies provided to the office in Maine. This is because your, these forms must be made available to the contract administrator during management and occupancy reviews. This is a requirement of HUD, and anything missing will result in findings on the audit and or termination of EIB access for the user and coordinator. It is essential that you stay in compliance with the EIB requirements that are set forth by HUD. The documentation will help us show to the auditor that we have stayed in compliance with the user access requirement. Coordinator documents are maintained in the main office. We do not expect you to maintain these and request these uh, for your EIB binder. So each time that we have notification of an MOR coming up at your property, the compliance assistant will pull the coordinator and owner documentation for you and attach this to the MOR smart sheet for you to download and print. The documents that you can expect will be the owner's authorization letter with the list of properties, the initial coordinator access form signed by the coordinator and HUD, approved electronic EIB UAAF, documentation of EIB training attended within the last two years, EIB security awareness training dated within the last 12 months, and the tracks rules of behavior dated within 30 days of that security awareness training. You may note, if you're familiar with the documentation that users are required to complete, that this sounds very familiar. And it is very true that the coordinators must also provide quite a bit of the same information. Site staff documents must be maintained in the EIB binder on site. We want you to maintain all of the originals on site in your binder. The copies that you're providing to the main office are a backup in case anything gets lost. In the event that something is lost, when we receive notification of your MOR, the user information for corporate users as well as site staff will also be in the uh, user binder that we upload to the MOR smart sheet for you. So all the documentation that's required for EIB users, whether they are from the corporate office or from site staff, it's the original EIB UAAF HUD Form 90012, signed by both the user and the coordinator. The approved electronic EIB UAAF, which is done every year in October and April, as well as the initial setup. Tracks and EIB rules of behavior, signed within the last 12 months. Cyber awareness training certificate, within the last 12 months. SHP EIB policy acknowledgement, SHP training acknowledgement, both forms signed. And the last item is certificate of EIB training attended within the last 12 months. For EIB non-users, staff who have access to EIB reports but no access to EIB, traditionally this has been maintained solely at the site However, we have created a place in the EIB smart sheet to upload the documentation for your non-users as a backup for you. However, within your binder, you should be maintaining the EIB rules of behavior for non-users signed within the last 12 months, cyber awareness training certificate within the last 12 months, signed copies of the EIB policy acknowledgement and the training acknowledgement and a certificate that they have attended EIB training within the last 24 months. For any independent public auditors who are coming to review your files, they should also be signing the EIB rules of behavior for non-users. And these must be maintained in your EIB binder and provided at the time of an MOR if they were signed within the last 12 months. Each property must maintain an EIB report binder, either separated by calendar months or separated by report. In some cases, the setup of your EIB binder is designated by your CA. So if you are unsure of how your binder should be set up, please contact your senior manager and they can assist you with that. The first section in your EIB binder will be the EIB binder checklist. 
This provides a summary of all the coordinators and users who have access to EIV or EIV information in the tenant file and have completed all the required documents. Each year when we receive notification of an MOR, we will send you an updated binder checklist with all of your current EIV users. This is a screenshot of that checklist and you'll see at the bottom section there is an area for EIV non-users who have access to reports. So if we're missing any of your non-users, you can manually add them to the list here and check off the documentation that you have in your binder for them. When you're reviewing your binder, you may find that there are quite a few documents in there. However, be sure that you are not purging any of the staff forms or policy forms. Be sure that those are always maintained in your binder. The only time staff forms are purged would be when a new form is signed or uh, completed. And in that case, I would even advise holding on to that historical item in an archive area in case any questions come up from prior audits. We must maintain EIV reports for three years. So all reports can be destroyed after three years. Uh, the best way to do this is to shred these reports. We cannot simply throw them away. When you're reviewing EIV documentation, please be sure that any detail reports are retained in the tenant file only and that the tenant and that the detail report contains information only for that tenant's household, not for additional households. In some cases, the bulk reports do not have page breaks between the households. So this is why we do not recommend using the bulk report function in EIV. Uh, some people don't mind cutting the pages and having them be different sizes. Uh, however, I don't think that looks the best in the binder and prefer to have those reports printed individually. Any reports that you are printing for your physical binder should also be printed to PDF and maintained in the digital EIB binder on the network drive. To print to PDF, select the printer friendly option or file print. Find the Fox at PDF printer, click print, navigate to your EIB folder, name the document, and click save. When you click print, you should see the printer Fox at Phantom PDF printer available to you if you are on the remote desktop. Simply select that as the printer and click print, and then you'll have the option to navigate to the end drive to your EIB folder and save directly into your folder. The navigation that you will follow is N Properties A-EIV. You'll then go within the state folder and find your property folder and navigate to the correct year and month. So why do you think we ask you to save the report as a PDF instead of scanning the report that you printed? In some cases, some staff members are more comfortable printing the report to paper using their printer and then scanning them in uh, to the network. The reason that we ask you to save the report as a PDF is because it is often much easier to read in some cases, either the printer or scanner will have lines or part of the page will drop off or it will be sideways or crooked or be fuzzy and hard to read. So saving it to the PDF reduces those issues and makes it a much better copy if you were to need uh, to reprint anything that is missing from your binder in the event that Maybe coffee gets spilled or a fire happens and we need to reprint your EIV reports for an audit. So please be sure that you are saving your reports to PDF. Once they are PDFs, you can then print all the PDFs and it will look very nice for your binder.